Hey everyone, so I wanted to take a minute to, um, uh, this week I'm going to break it up into three videos. Uh, in this video I want to give some general thoughts about this textbook, um, edited by Eric Johnson and with uh, five views, uh, which is part of the name. Um, and I wanted to give some big pictures, uh, comments about how to read it in this video. And then the next video, I wanted to give uh, some commentary about two of the viewpoints. And then the last video, uh, uh, commentary about uh, two more of the video points. And we're, we're going to actually skip the, the fifth view. So um, I don't think I've read a book quite like this. It's, uh, it's really interesting having basically a debate in the midst of a, um, of a book. Um, so each, um, not only are they presenting their arguments, but then they um, also pre uh, present a critique of each viewpoint. So um, yeah, I, I think it's a great way to help um, introduce some critical thinking about some of the integration issues. So um, again, I, I wanted to con give you a little bit of tools. So um, when you think about this, uh, you, you want to think in terms of um, what is it saying about the science of psychology uh, or I guess more accurately, what is it saying about the science of human nature? Uh, how do we understand human nature? Um, do they say that it's per predominantly from science or is it predominantly from um, theology and Christianity or, and, and scripture? Or um, how do they propose the blending of that? And, um, you know, in particular, how much do they understand, like, comes from uh, the Bible, how much do they understand comes from science, um, and do they appreciate the limitations of scripture and um, sort of the boundaries, and do they appreciate the, the limitations and, and boundaries of, of science? Or, conversely, do they overemphasize the limitations of scripture, or do they overemphasize the limitations of, of science? Um, and so I, th I think that's certainly a, a big picture thing as you're reading it to, to be uh, on the lookout for. The other part of it is um, when you when you read it, think about, OK, what does this mean in terms of actually working and helping people? Um, what does it say about interventions? Um, because some of the the uh, arguments are that, yes, um, you know, psychology says something about uh, the way human uh, nature actually is but it said some people some of the authors will claim it says very little about interventions how to work well with people and um and so uh just as you're reading uh be on the lookout for th that kind of argument now um i gotta bring up my notes here um also as you're you're reading i really want you to think about what are the safeguards in each perspective that will help um, us from claiming things that we can actually don't have evidence to claim. So some of them will draw heavily upon uh, biblical and scriptural and Christian uh, um, understandings of human nature. And I want you to think about each of those and say, well, what are what protects us from claiming that we understand human nature um, beyond what we can actually uh, discern or, or discriminate from these sources. What, what safeguards are there to assure us that the knowledge that we have is actually true? Um, so, you know, do they, do they appreciate that, you know, when we interpret scripture, our understandings are inherently biased by our, our past experiences? Um, when they're drawing upon, you know, some of the Christ, uh, ancient Christian understandings of um, the church fathers and others, uh, you know, historical theologians, are they accurately um, criticizing them and, and appreciating that they may have some, um, you know, their own limitations and their own biases that might actually keep the, those perspectives from actually being accurate? So think about the, you know, how do you safeguard against um, believing you have the truth in that perspective 
when it may not actually be true. Similarly, what do they have uh, as safeguards in the scientific method? Uh, do they um, have ways that to critically consider the limitations? Um, so some of the authors will criticize the, uh, from a postmodern perspective that the science of psychology has not um, has made claims that go beyond um, the, basically that they've made claims of objectivity and um, you know modernist claims that cannot be truly supported from a philosophical perspective. Um, so I, I think there are some that argue we need to um, be more appreciative of that. And so uh, again, uh, what are the safeguards to know that what we gain using these perspectives, these different approaches to integration, uh, will actually lead us to greater truth as opposed to, you know, um, greater, you know, self-deception. And um, and so those, again, are the bigger, you know, um, as you're reading it, try not to get too caught up on the, the rhetoric that they use, the vocabulary, the way that they speak, if they make bold claims. You know, as you're reading it, um, say, okay, that's a, a bold claim. Are they backing it up with evidence? Um, and uh, again, that's a hard thing to do, but um, but uh, I, I try to engage it in a way that you're really, on an ongoing basis, criticizing and, and thinking about: Is this really the right way? You know, the stakes are high because you want to um, do integration in a way that is, you know, consistent with your Christianity, but also, you know, is going to get you to the, the ultimate truth, the, um, uh, not the ultimate truth, but it'll get, get you closer to truth. And so, um, I, I just want you to be thoughtful as you do that. All right. I think that's it for this video. Um, the next video I'll, I'll outline, uh, the first two chapters and, um, help you to, to be able to process it. Okay. Bye.